Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? With a lot of people working and learning from home, there's an increased need for affordable computers. This time, let's take a look at a laptop that costs less than $100, but stands a chance against one that's brand new. I think we're all familiar with how technology progresses. Computers keep getting faster, and traditionally, anything older than a few years got left behind. But is that still the case today? I wanted to find out for myself, so with a total budget of $100 US, I set out to see what's the best laptop I could come up with. After looking around for a while, I settled on this, a Lenovo ThinkPad X220. I bought it for $80 from Free Geek Twin Cities, a nonprofit in Minneapolis that recycles and refurbishes computers and other technology. It features a 12.5 inch display with a resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels, the same as a lot of new laptops today. It has an interesting mix of ports with a headset jack, gigabit ethernet, USB, and an SD card slot on the right side, and two more USB ports, VGA, DisplayPort, and an Express card slot on the left. This particular laptop is overall in decent shape. It's been used, but not abused, and shows the typical signs of wear. There's a crack in the screen bezel, and the corners of the lid have chipped a little. The keys on the keyboard are a bit shiny, and there are some scratches here and there, but none of this affects its functionality. The machine came with 8GB of DDR3 RAM, so I didn't need to worry about that. FreeGeek often installs Ubuntu Linux on the computers it refurbishes, and that was the case with this one. Not only is that operating system free, it's also generally considered to be more lightweight than Windows, so older computers can perform better. But even so, it felt a little sluggish on this machine. It took a few minutes to boot, and even at the desktop, there was some lag to the user interface. So I spent the last $20 of my budget to fix that. There was a one terabyte mechanical drive already installed in the computer, which is only ever gonna perform okay at best. To replace it, I picked up a used SATA SSD, specifically a 128 gigabyte drive that's the OEM equivalent to a Samsung 830. It's by no means the latest and greatest in SSD technology, but it's still a decent drive and, well, any improvement would be welcome. What's nice is that drives like this have become really inexpensive, and used 256 gig drives sell for only a little bit more. Now, while Linux is great, I decided to install Windows on the drive, as that's what I think a lot of people would be more comfortable and productive with. It would also give a better picture as to how this machine's performance compares to modern laptops. Windows 10 installed smoothly and had the drivers for almost everything built in. The only ones I needed to find myself were for the Intel vPro management and, weirdly enough, the SD card reader. This X220 originally shipped with Windows 7 Pro, and conveniently, the product key on the machine was able to activate the Windows 10 installation. So this thing is totally legit. And with that SSD, the machine actually performs really well. It boots in just a few seconds, and the UI is nicely responsive. Apps launch quickly, and it doesn't feel like the computer is all that old. It's seriously a good experience. And that's actually the craziest part. The ThinkPad X220 was launched back in March of 2011. This one has a second gen Intel Core i5, specifically an i5-2520M. That CPU has two cores and four threads with a base clock of 2.5 gigahertz and uses 32 nanometer lithography. In an era where laptops commonly have six and even eight core CPUs, based on 14 or even 10 nanometer processes, this i5 looks positively ancient. And the Cinebench results certainly make it look that way, scoring a 432. For comparison, my sixth gen ThinkPad X1 Carbon from 2018 pulled off a 1233. 
yeah, that's a big difference. But it's also not a fair comparison, considering that even used 6th gen carbons sell for 10 times as much as what I paid for the X220. The average person on a budget needing a computer would most likely be looking at inexpensive new machines. And if we put this one up against those, things get really different really quick. Comparing Geekbench scores, there's no contest. This used ThinkPad is at least twice as fast in multi-core scores against the chips that come in Windows laptops priced around the $300 mark. And what's more, those machines usually have eMMC flash storage, which is dramatically slower than what the used SATA SSD I threw in this one is capable of. Now, I'm not so much surprised that a computer this old can still deliver usable performance, but rather just how, well, bad that new cheap laptops are. The least expensive brand new computer I could find that equaled the performance of this used one costs 400 bucks, and that was only when comparing multi-core scores. This X220 is still faster when it comes to single core performance. And beyond performance, the X220 keeps up with new laptops in other ways. It has a built-in 720p webcam, which, okay, yeah, it looks like garbage. But you know what else is 720p and also looks like garbage? Yeah, the built-in webcams on a lot of new laptops, even the more expensive ones. This one doesn't have a backlit keyboard, but it does have a think light, which some people argue is more useful anyway. It has a fingerprint reader, though it's the kind of the clunky type where you have to swipe across it. And no, none of the machines from this time period have USB Type-C ports, but they are new enough to have USB 3, so external storage can still be plenty fast. There are, of course, some caveats to going with a used machine. First is that, well, yeah, I mean, it's used. There's no warranty. If it breaks, you're on your own. With laptops, you also have to think about the battery. This one came with the optional 9-cell pack, and while the wear on it is decently low for its age, this is going to vary dramatically between computers, and brand new replacements can sometimes cost as much as the computer itself. And finally, you have to be somewhat careful when picking one out. Your best bet is going to be to find a business class computer like a ThinkPad, Dell Latitude, or HP ProBook. They're generally much better built than consumer-focused machines and are also easier to service and repair. Thankfully, there's a ton of them out there from companies that have upgraded or machines that have gone off lease. And prices are really reasonable. You may think the 80 bucks I paid for this X220 seems low, but that's actually about in line with what these are going for on eBay. And checking out other models from the same era shows similar prices, all averaging around the $100 mark. Of course, this is all from the perspective of general use computing, web surfing, productivity apps, online learning, nothing too intense. But clearly, a nine-year-old computer like this, if you choose wisely, can certainly keep up, even when running the latest operating system. It really shows that unless you need high-performance computing, there's not so much of a reason to upgrade as frequently anymore. And what's even better is that machines almost a decade old are an incredible value and can still prove to be plenty useful. Sometimes, they just need a little bit of help getting there. Speaking of help, I have a request. I realize that the majority of my regular viewers are very tech savvy, and while this video may have proven interesting, well, you may already have plenty of technology at home to fulfill your needs. The same can't be said of everyone, though, and that's where nonprofits like Free Geek Twin Cities fit in. They take donated computers and tech, responsibly recycle what's unusable, and fix up the rest to get it back out into the community to those who need it. If you're capable of doing so, I ask that you please support these organizations by donating money, equipment, or even just your time through volunteering. You can find one near you by using a search term like nonprofit computer recycling. And if you're interested in learning more, I'll include a link to a documentary I made. 
Technology has the power to unite us and improve lives, and that's something we need now more than ever. So even if an old computer isn't of use to you anymore, it could make a huge difference to someone else.